Hello. Hello, welcome to the Women's Cave. I feel like I rushed the last time and uh, <clears throat> someone called us out on the professionalism thing, which I feel is ridiculous. Which we was, said we're not professional. No, what are no, you talking no, about? No, they didn't call us out on the professionalism thing. They were saying that we see, like, in our chaos, it seems to be like a like a professional chaos. So I'm going to go with, I'm we're professional-ish. Oh, -ish. I do like ish. ish. I do ish. love the ish. Oh, by the way, I'm well known as and I'm Jade. Oh, and I'm high five. Social distance. distance. Or air high five, whatever. So I guess an air high five would be better. Like, high five. And right? that was not in frame at all. Oh, was it? So, <laughs> all they saw was high, high sweater arms. Was I right? <laughs> Sweaters are cool too, right? <laughs> yeah. I guess. I don't no, know. Mm? No, they're not cool. We have stuff. Oh, do we have stuff? Yes. Book. Oh yeah. Okay. So we have. I didn't know we were already there. I thought no, we, we really aren't. To, to talk about though. Okay. But I want biscuits, and she's making biscuits. So I'm her. I'm hurrying her along because fresh biscuits with butter are delicious. No, no, and, and strawberry jam because you can't. Mm. You can't miss your strawberry jam. Like, I, don't know, I guess you can, but I wouldn't do it. Anyway, books. Books. Yeah. What we call literary life guides with pop poetry. And I thought the. I'm gonna just. Because it's like a whole bunch of them. Just do the two. There's like 17. So I'm going to give you like the fan favorites, the top four. Here we go. And I thought divorce was bad with other life lessons. And I thought being grown up was easy. Both available on audible.com and bondsandnoble.com and um, Amazon.com. Amazon okay. And, and then the rest of the 13. Wait, I, thought I said top four. So oh, right. We're missing one. And I thought I did my journey alone. People tend to like that. And it's an all poetry book. Okay. And then if only I were me. Available on Barnes and Noble only, and that's an all poetry book, also. So that's exciting. I, I guess people really like our poetry and our short stories. Probably not so much. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> okay, and the Twenty Five Hottest Indie Authors, Artists, and Advocate magazine, and we are the co-founders of that. And let's see, you can find out everything your ladies are doing on www.andwethought.com. But you're not here to hear anything else about us and what we do. I know. Because I could go on for like a mom. She could. Narcissist yeah. that but, she is. So, you're here to hear from our wonderful guests. Wonderful guests, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, girls. I'm happy to be here. You guys crack me up. You're so <laughs> funny. <laughs> Thank I'm you. Like, I'm over here laughing so hard. I'm eating Cheez-Its and just looking at you guys and laughing my butt off. You're hilarious. <laughs> um, that's high praise coming from a comedian. So I oh, no. You have to have a show. You guys are perfect. And you're not, I love how you say you're not perfect, but it is perfect because it's you guys. I can just see your personalities are shining right through the screen yeah, here. It is. It's very true. It's, it's us, us on a regular, everyday, like, situation. Unfortunately, How long have you known each other? How long have you known each other? Oh, for forever. Like, let me oh. show. I don't even want to say the whole story. It's forever. And, you know, that's <clears throat> years. Is it really childhood? Since childhood? Yes, yeah, since childhood. We've known that each other. That is, like, so special. I have one friend like that, but she lives in San Francisco and I'm in L.A. But um, when I get with her, even if I haven't seen her for years... We just start laughing over the stupidest shit. Like we just, because we go right back to childhood. Right, right. And that's how it is. It's, it's like us, we, we were in stores, we would go to stores and like shop and stuff. And we would always have everyone in line, like cracking up, just being our regular selves. <laughs> the woman is the cheapest person you ever want to meet. And I am oh, so much a cheap person. And so if there was like a sale, she would be like, let's just get one because they only paid half of the half price. And you'd be like, it's new, it's on freaking sale. <laughs> <laughs> you guys crack me up. So thank you for having me so much. My name is Christine Blackburn and I have a podcast called Story Worthy and I'm celebrating my 10 year anniversary right now, July. Uh, July, I started July of 2010 and here we are in 2020 and my show Story Ready is doing better and better and I'm just really excited about it. I also have a new show called The Story Where the Hour of Power and that's a new show. It's a Zoom webinar and I get uh, four people who've been on my show before and myself and we tell a true 10 minute story each of us. So it's, it's a one hour long show and uh, in the after show we play a game show that I made up called Story Smash that we've been playing at the improv for years but of course now it's closed. So anyway, on Sunday nights, uh, there's a little bit to look forward to. The story where the hour of power and story smash at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, 6 p.m. Uh, L.A. time, sorry. 9 o'clock to you guys. Anyway, it's been super fun. So that's what's happening right now. 
and uh, story worthy uh, had over um, tomorrow's episode with Kevin Nealon will be 630 episodes. Busy lady that you are. <laughs> oh, goodness. And first, I need to, we need to totally say this. Congratulations on Thanks. Really, truly, that's amazing. And one day, we're going to grow up to be like you. Yeah, that's gonna, awesome. I Thanks. Mean, it's not going to look as great, though. I know, right? Yeah, right. right. They can eat Cheez-Its. I, I, I swear, like, <laughs> when, when, like, six years down the road, like, I will smell a Cheez-It and be like, oh, 25 pounds. That's fabulous. Let me just go back and eat this grain. <laughs> so, okay, I have to say real quick, before we started this, she was like, I'm going to mute myself because I don't want to be eating on camera. Yeah. Um, I'm not a professional individual. Well, professional-ish. Ish. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, we haven't had lunch and it's four o'clock here, so I'm sorry. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> We've been working through lunch, so yeah, go ahead and have a little bit of a cookie. So, I mean, how, did so, you how many, how many uh, recordings do you do a day, generally? It depends on the day. So we can do anywhere from two to six. I think that's so smart. And then you stockpile them, of course. Yes. Yeah. It's so smart. I have like one, two, three, four, five different types of shows. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Tell me the other ones. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> okay, so it's all the women's cave, but it's, right. we, have, we have the Ladies Tale podcast, which is new, which is new-ish. Um, and wait, 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 we're not supposed to be answering questions. Well, she <laughs> asked. Well, I guess asked you for an answer. So you you give the answer. That's it's it's kind of like, the guest is always right. Okay. right. It's kind of like when a guest comes to your home and be like, do you have a Coke? And you're like, I don't even ever drink Coke. And you go, you get in your car, you drive out, you get the Coke. <laughs> Just in your house and darn it, they want to go. <laughs> you do it. Okay. So yeah. So um, we started since the whole pandemic thing. Um, fans have been asking us for different things. So yeah. Wednesday on instead of the umbrella of our show, we have um, sometimes we have poetry Tuesday okay. and then so teach nice. Thursday and teach them Thursdays where you meet Hollywood Monday. Sometimes. Yeah. And um, teach them Thursday is a lot about the art, uh, the business behind the art. Okay. So, so are you guys able to, you're put, you put them all up. They're all going up. Yes. yes. So they're all up on our YouTube and yes. Facebook. Facebook. Okay. So now that we've answered all these questions. Good I on you. You guys are rocking it, man. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing something. Rocking it might not be it. We might, we might be like shuffling it, but shuffling, it's shuffling, it. It. shuffling it. I go with that. <laughs> yeah. We're shuffling it, but you <laughs> are rocking it. And let's talk about how you started your show. Oh my gosh. So it started, um, and like I said, 2010, and I had been really involved with the Moth uh, storytelling show. Are you guys familiar with the Moth? Mm -hmm. If people don't know, it's a storytelling show out of New York, and now, now they're everywhere. It's, it's basically, you can get on stage for five minutes and tell a story. Uh, it's mostly amateurs, and there's 10, 10 stories in the show. They're all based on the theme that the Moth picks. And anyway, the point is, is I was going to the show a lot, and everybody gets five minutes you know, if your name is pulled. So uh, anyway, if you get called up, then you go. And I would see people telling their story and then they'd be done with their story. And it'd be like, you know, and that's how my dad and I reunited. And then I'd be like, I got a question, excuse me, <laughs> question. But that's it, you're gone, they're gone. And the host comes on and that's that person. And now I'm chasing them out to the car. Excuse me, I had one question, <laughs> excuse me. Because I always wanted to ask the follow-up. Like, when people tell their story, it's not everything you, you know what I mean? You got, you got questions. So uh, that was number one, that I was going to the storytelling show a lot because I have done a lot in my life. So I, I had a lot of true stories to share. And then the second thing that happened was Adam Carolla created his podcast in 2009. And I just, I was always a big fan of his. And when he got kicked off, you know, terrestrial radio, I kind of followed him. Well, it started with Howard Stern and then Adam Carolla replaced him on the radio station out here. Then Howard went to Sirius and Adam started his show. And I started thinking to myself, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is accessible. You know, like this is all on a consumer level. I, I see what they're doing. It's just a computer. It's just a microphone, you know? And um, so those two things combined, I thought, well, why don't I create my own podcast? and then make it about storytelling. And I've also done a lot of stand-up comedy, so it's like mostly comedians on my show because they, they understand brevity, they understand how to, uh, how to keep it tight and funny and they, they get to the meat of it very quickly. There's not a lot of uh, banter, you know. 
Uh, just mountain, okay. Yeah, right. Yeah, There's yeah, not right. a lot of that. There's not a lot. Yeah. Yeah. We'll never make yeah. it in comedy. Yeah. That's yeah. No, but you know, sometimes you're reading a book and then you say, "How is the book?" And you're like, "Oh, it's good." But the first, like the first 35 pages were kind of, kind of a drag. And then you say, "You know, when they should have started that that book, that book should have started on page 36." <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, anyway. So I get comedians to come on and. uh and there's also writers, a lot of writers, and, and uh, mostly people out here in Los Angeles that I know and that I've met through different shows and performing. And, uh, and then I also uh, get guests from different like uh, public relations people who will send over their people or their guests, you know, because everybody needs, everybody wants to be on a show, everybody needs content, everybody wants to work and everybody wants to be interviewed. And anyway, so um, it all kind of worked together and uh, I've been with two different networks, but now I'm, I'm independent again. So it's been, I've been independent, then I go to a network. Then I'm independent, then I go to a network. And now it's been independent for three years and I'm really happy this way for now. Um, and, uh, you know, from my show Story Worthy, I went on to create Story Smash, the game show that I was telling you about. You can go to storysmashshow.com. It's a really funny website. And I've had on big names, man. I've had on Larry King. I've had on... Um, I've had on uh, Wendy McClendon Covey. I've had on Wayne Fetterman. I've had on uh, just just really, just an amazing amount of talent. I've had on Alonzo Bowden. Anyway, so um, though I've been doing the, 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 the game show as well every month at the Improv for like I said, three years, but now of course we're not. So during the pandemic, I started the Story Ready Hour of Power. And like I said, that's a storytelling show on Sunday nights. And now we've just incorporated Story Smash into it. And it's really funnier than I thought. I was so afraid that this is not going to work. You know, this game show. And I, I, I need, I need like, when I'm at the improv, I need six people helping me. I mean, I need this guy on the, this guy on the clock, this guy on the sound, this guy on the lights, whatever. And now I'm here by myself. And pay, well, my daughter's with me, but she helped me a lot, actually, uh, pull it together. But, you know. I get these orange tablecloths, I put them up on the wall, I get these lights, and 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 it's just so funny. Like outside, I must look like a clown is in here. I'm like, eh, 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 and we're just doing this whole game show. It's very funny. I'd love you guys to come. It's very funny. Anybody can play. And there's a ticket site through my podcast, storyworthypodcast.com. There's a ticket site for the Story Ready Hour of Power on Sundays. And there's always a free option. Always a free option. Always. So uh, anyway, that's what's been going on. So, um, you know, uh, over the last 10 years, there's, there's ups and there's downs and things change. And I had a co-host for six years, my best friend, Hannes. Uh, he and I were co-hosts for six years. And then the last four I've done on my own. So it's just, but so things change, music changes. Um, I've been very fortunate. I've kept my logo the whole time, never changed my logo. And I've never, not only have I never missed a week, uh, but in 2014, 2014, I had this idea. I say to myself, you know, I would like more listeners. Like, I need more downloads. I really need more downloads. What do I do? What do I do? And I started thinking, oh, well, you know, Adam Carolla, he does five podcasts a week. I just got to do more podcasts. So I start doing two a week. And so for a whole summer, I did four, I did two a week. So it was eight a month for the whole summer. And, um, you know what happened? I didn't get more listeners and more downloads. People just started having a choice of which one they wanted to listen to. You know what I mean? Like, because what happens in podcasting is you're asking somebody for more of their time. And time is very valuable. People have stuff in their Netflix queue they're never going to get to. People have still have DVRs that are, you know what I mean? They got a stack of magazines. There's plenty of content. So it's like, Anyway, that was interesting. That was a big epiphany for me. Like, I'm not Howard Stern. I can't command that audience. I'm not, you know, Joe Rogan or whatever. So anyway, it, it, you know, it's a lot of trial and error. And it's a lot of, uh, sometimes there's money, sometimes there's not. You know, sometimes there's sponsors, sometimes there's not. So it's just a lot of tenacity and stick to itiveness. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty proud of myself. Wow. <laughs> As you should, should be. be. I mean, 10 years, ups and downs. And you openly admit ups and downs, which is another yeah. thing. Um, That's nice. <laughs> that's yeah. And then you talk about how you were with a network and then not with a network. What are like the two or three really big differences between being like an indie artist and being like having like a network? 
money, just money. I mean, it's, um, they take, it depends on who you're with, 30% to 50%. I think podcast one takes 55%. Podcast one, you have to have 30,000 downloads just to get on that network anyway. That's what it used to be. Maybe it changed. Mm. A lot of these numbers are changing. You know, when I started, I was always in the top 10 of Apple, or excuse me, um, yeah, well, it was called iTunes at that time. Now it's called Apple Podcasts. But on iTunes, I was always one of the top 10 because there were only 100 people in the field. <laughs> so, there was nobody around. And no, but I would, honestly, when I started, I was getting like 80,000 downloads an episode, which is a lot. And now it's kind of gone steadily down until about two years ago, two years ago, started picking back up. But you know what I mean? Like, in other words, there's more people in the field. So things have changed big time. Uh, but... That being said, we're still in the early days of podcasting, as you guys know, because there's only about a million podcasts, which is really actually a very small number uh, compared to like YouTube has 33 million. You know what I mean? So it, anyway. Huh. I, can, I can see that. I'm absolutely. And Ooh. I did have like another question and I, I do. totally forgot. So I, I have know. another question. So you also do a little bit of writing. Am I correct? I do a lot of writing. Yeah. I'm always yeah. writing. And it, you just had an article in what, Podcast Magazine? Yeah, I did. A, I did. Well, you know, I've, I've done a lot of, of uh, I don't think they're called speeches. They're called like um, seminars, right? You know, when you go, I go speak at Podcast Movement or wherever, and I love doing that. And I'm always talking about either podcasting, storytelling, comedy, or um, uh, <laughs> podcasting, storytelling, or, <laughs> oh, interviewing. <laughs> How to interview, how to get a good interview. So that was the one that Podcast Magazine just published, which is a really great, it's a really great article about interviewing because it's not what you read in all the other interviewing. It's not like the how-to, like, first you should say this, and then you should say this. It's all about, really, the preparation. Mm -hmm. It's all in the preparation. And then the, and it's almost like auditioning. I think I was doing a show earlier, and they were asking me about my commercial career because I've done a lot of commercials. Um, you know, you go out for... 50 auditions for one job you know what I mean and so it's the work is always in the auditioning putting your makeup on or going out getting dressed up and driving across the city or whatever that's the work and then the reward is shooting the commercial super fun the actor is the only one that wants to be on the set everybody else wants to go home but the actor's like woo I'm here you know I'm so happy to be here um and that being said um now I'm forgetting my point Oh, that being said, that when I am with somebody and I'm interviewing them, like I had Kevin Nealon on the show the other day, this part, even being with you girls now, this is the fun. I mean, this is the fun part. This is the reward, is that I have done the pre-production work and I've gotten into the frame of mind. I have learned about you. I have done this or that. And, and, and I'm ready to ask the questions that nobody else has asked or nobody's made you feel, you know? So by sharing, when people share a story, a true story, uh, you're learning a lot about them and you don't even have to ask the questions. So you can ask different questions, you know, and you can say like, well, then what happened on the trip? Well, then what? Do you know what I mean? So it's not like, where are you from? How did you start? It's not long form interview. It's a different, it's a, it gets to be more interesting interview because usually when people tune in and want to hear somebody, often they already know those things, those top things, you know, especially if they're big or whatever. That's so true. That is so, so fabulous. True. And I'm sorry if you had to do um, research on us. That that must have been a little... I think you guys are so funny. I told you, I'm so happy you're in this field. Yeah, no, no I'm, I'm sorry. I, I think it's nice that someone's happy that we're in this field. Although our research on us is boring and painful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. They write a lot of poetry. Would they put down the door in bed? <laughs> well, wants to know. Uh, <sighs> I do have two narcissistic oh. questions because I am a narcissist. Oh. Uh, so I was hoping. I was hoping. That you were you, hoping to escape. That you were <laughs> your cookie and there was gonna be no narcissist questions because you were focusing <laughs> all your energy on the cookie. Oh wait, wait. Mm, still good, and I still have energy. Oh, oh that's awesome. 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 Anyway, how do you make your biscuits? What's the key? Baking powder. Oh wow! Oh, she skipped the okay. narcissistic question. So here, and got the here is the the key to my biscuit recipe. Y'all, I'm writing it down right now. Cake flour. Oh, interesting. So it hasn't been sifted. No, no, just cake flour. Okay. Do anything else? Don't use that all-purpose flour. Your biscuits are gonna be heavy and not light. 
cake I flour see. is the answer. Or I guess, yeah, cake flour is my answer. Yeah. Wow, that's really good to know. So it's, it's just salt. cake flour, some salt, some yeah, just uh, like other, butter. Like go on online and like Google. Yeah, yeah any biscuit recipe. Right, but do that's, cake flour. That's so interesting. Good one. So good one. So light and fluffy. It's light and fluffy. And that I'm, is the key. So now everyone's going to make money off of my biscuit recipe, right? And not me. What you, wait, 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 wait. It's just a funny thing because I honestly, I wouldn't have thought it was about the flour. But it, it does make sense. Waffles are about the flour. Like you, you make homemade waffles and you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to use this regular oat pepper flour. Don't you do it. Cake flour. Now and you then, have to sift that flour. You have to sift that flour. But understand, understand, it will hold your butter and your syrup like nobody's business. I put, wow. a little cake, I put a little cake flour in my um pancakes. Like I use regular flour and then I'd like one fourth a cup, bam, cake flour. So how do you sift it? What's that process? I don't know. You, I you have a sift. Okay, so y'all really want to- I, I have a sister, I have a sifter for like for powdered yeah. sugar, psh, 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 like, a, yeah. like that. You put your cake it's flour the same in there thing. and you sift it the same way. You can way. sift it the same way or you just put a little plastic wrap or like if you have a lid, I know yeah. plastic wrap is wasteful y'all, I get it, but I, make this for a lot of people, so I have to plastic wrap them. Sorry, I'm trying. I can't find anything else. But, uh, we all have our problems. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry. Well, I think like that regular sifter that you'd be like, all day, and I just put plastic wrap over top of it and shake it, and the flour will come out. And it makes it so much No, better. but what is it separating? Um, It's just making it's just it- putting like more air. So in. when you make it more air, and then also when you are, Flour comes out lumps, right? Uh huh. And those lumps kind of like transfer into your food. That's so really like interesting. You it, so you just sift the it and then it, yeah. flat, like this, just flour, and it looks soft and beautiful. And yes, I'm gonna say weird things about Jade. Like I love making biscuits because you get that feeling, and you're like, I am making bread. I am giving life. I know that's weird, but <laughs> I mean, if you um, if you so it and I, interesting. And I, and I thought being grown up was easy. It's actually well known as late mother's. Biscuit, biscuit recipe, recipe, which is what oh my god, oh, no, like, that's so of, cool. Instead of having chapters, each each uh, section of poetry and stories is one step of the biscuit recipe. So right, when you finish so life lessons. You have a biscuit recipe at the that end. That is so sweet. That's and a that's wonderful idea. Her mother told us because I have Winona is cheap. I told you she's the cheapest you ever want to know. You didn't tell and, that. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, she is though. She, she's really she's frugal, frugal, and so she put a half. A half stick, stick of, of butter. butter. And her mother was like, you better get on those interviews and tell people it's a whole stick of butter, but if you're in a pinch, use a half. <laughs> so I know she just said late. And then you were like, how can my mother have something to say if she's a late mother? Um, here's the thing. My mother only read one book during my <clears throat> years. long, many years. And that's including writing. all the stuff that happened when she was 10. <sighs> she got like published. I got published at 10 and nothing. Her mother now. never she read it. Read she was book. proud of it. She made everybody else read it, but she didn't read it. So she wow. read this book. This is the only book she read. And cover then, to cover. Yes. And was like, you better tell those people in those interviews it's a full stick. That is fart. so funny. So the one thing she finally read had that error. Yep. Did you mean to put a half stick or did you want to? I, I did it. Like, so we did this on purpose because, and I thought <sighs> being grown up was easy, is for people who are like from 19 to 25. Yeah. Ish kind of area. Yeah. And you know, you know, when you get out of college, you don't yeah, have money. 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 Yeah, money. Yeah, of and course. So we literally and the made... most expensive thing for making biscuits is the butter. The butter, right. Because it's essentially a dollar a stick, as it were. Yeah. Pretty much. So if you or use two, half... even two bucks, yeah, or two to one fifty. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So if you use a half stick, I mean, yeah. you have twice as many biscuits. You know, I've heard that now and then, yeah, you can also skimp on eggs. I've heard yeah. that. Like, if it says four eggs, they mean three. Yeah, you or, can, or, or you can put in two eggs and then two ta two whopping tablespoons of mayonnaise, and it'll hold your food together just the same. Or you can take out all the if it says one egg, you can take out all the eggs and just put in mayo. Yeah, and mix it really well, it'll hold it together. Or check this one out. Uh, replace in pancakes the oil or the butter, whichever you're going to use. Replace that with applesauce. Yes, yes, that yeah. works. That's yeah. really interesting. I doesn't taste. Yeah. We're sharing. We're we sharing. We can fall down that rabbit hole. I told you we talking back. about talking about food. But yeah, so anyway, that full stick, but half stick if you don't have it and use the other half to put on 
lather yeah. with a room with you. I so, love butter. It's one of the the good things in life, you know. Like I don't, I don't, I don't like the stuff that is uh, unnatural. I don't like to not be able to read the ingredients. And butter is just clean, you know, to me. Yeah, I I love butter, and that's the one thing besides cake flour. I will not, I will not give up on. I'd be like, listen, yeah, we're gonna have butter. Let's have the butter. Let yeah, I know exactly. Forget that. I can't believe it's not. I can't believe I'd ever buy that shit. <laughs> Dude, we need to get back. We okay. need to get back on. on uh, well, she, we told her we were going to fall down the rabbit hole, and then she asked about my business, which I am super proud of. You know, the only I'm reason, excited. You know, the only reason I remember we need to get back because I was asking narcissistic questions. Okay, All right. Narcissistic question. Narcissistic question. Because we only have one. We only have. Ding 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 ding. One. You should have a little jingle in there. Ding 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 ding. It's time for a narcissistic question with Winona. Oh, oh my, my goodness! goodness. I, love I love it so much. <laughs> Today, the question is. <laughs> the, the question is, since you wrote the thing on how to, you wrote the article on how to do an interview, I have to know, how are we doing? You guys are adorable. You're doing a really good job. You did forget to, you did forget to introduce yourselves at the very top. But we say we will. Uh, yeah, we say we will. Well, I'm saying <laughs> that's Winona. <laughs> you're consistent. As long as you're consistent, that's what matters. Oh, you guys are so cute. Yeah, you know uh, it's, it's true though. People are like, you forget to introduce, I'm like, yeah, we get into the conversation and then we forget. All that matters is you're having fun. You're having so yeah. much fun and it's so obvious. So that's what's so fun about you guys. You actually forget, I actually forgot, I was doing it for the show by myself to introduce, I had a whole full 45 minute conversation and at the end of the show I went, oh shoot, I'm well known now. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, easy to do that. Oh, and then the end tag all. <laughs> that was, <laughs> that was it. The other thing that I always do for my guests, I'll show you. Um, I always have a template right here in the story worthy notebook. <laughs> no, um, but I do, I show this to all my guests. I say, this is the show you're on. I say that, I say, this is the show you're on. Cause some people don't even know, especially now during COVID. This is what you're on. And here's what we're gonna do. This is, this is what we're gonna do. So we're gonna start at the top. We are record, this is my show story where they were recording on Squadcast. Your name is Kevin Nealon. You're talking about Point Barrow, Alaska. We're recording today on the 13th and it's gonna air on the 14th. And the sponsor today is if there's a sponsor. And here's how it's gonna go. And I always say this to people, like here's what we're gonna do just so you know. And uh, just, just real quick, I'm just gonna run it down. And they always go like this to me, go yeah, yeah, tell me, tell me. People wanna know what is coming, what to expect, and when am I getting out of here? People want to know these things. So then you say, okay, well, anyway, I'm gonna start up here. I do a little welcome. And then at the very top, I do usually an ad if there's a sponsor. Uh, and then I pitch, I pitch my show and my, um, I'll pitch like my social media stuff. And then I start doing your credits. And I'm just telling you this because up here you're with me, we're chatting, but don't start your actual story until here after I do your credits, okay? They say yes. I say okay, great. And then uh, you go until about about thirty minutes in, and then we're going to summarize your story, and then we'll go ahead and pitch your projects, what you're up to, and then we'll be closing. The whole show will be about forty five minutes, so you know. And at the end, if you could do that promo for me, that'd be great. Thank you. And then they know. And this because it's nothing. It's just a stupid piece of paper. It's nothing. But you people. So that's the only thing. That's the only note I'd give you guys. Oh, no, I love it so much. It's a yeah, piece of paper. No, no, no. I'm about to do the it's piece a, of paper. It's about to become an email, an email format. I'm yeah, look how, look how mine got, it got all messed up so that I printed a new one. That's the kind of professional I am. That's, that's the kind of joint I'm running here, girls. <laughs> I love it. I love I'm it. making it all up. I'm making it all up on the fly. You know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do it to Staples, and then we can have it, like, laminated, and then we can write on it. Oh, that's a great idea. Ooh, that's Ooh. a really good idea. That's a really good idea that you could write on it and scratch out. Yeah, because people do want to know those very basic things. They really that's do. Awesome. Thank you so much. Like, my nurse is happy. taught us. I, I'm so happy. I'm so happy you asked that question. But now we have to get to the ending question because she needs to get out of here. I need to some butter the biscuits at some point. Oh and then, you know, I need to do it. So, yeah. Where can people um, find out more about you and your shows? And then what do you have coming up next? Okay, storyworthypodcast.com is like uh, my website and also christineblackburn.com. That's kind of ground central. And from there, you can find out all sorts of things, especially my new show, Storyworthy Hour of Power, every Sunday night at 6 p.m. Pacific time. 
You can tune in from anywhere in the world, and I've got some amazing guests on. I'm telling you, man, it's just uh, it's getting better and better. I've done it nine weeks now, and we also have uh, the the shows go up on YouTube as well, so you can look me up on YouTube under Christine Blackburn, and uh, follow me on Twitter. I really love Twitter at Storyworthy. She's Fabulous. not lying. She actually does like Twitter, and she's quite humorous. Yes. yes. Oh, now, thanks. Christine, if you I ever want your show to drop off a bit, please call us. Um, <laughs> 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 All right. Jade, would you wrap us up? Absolutely. And I'm going to finish my cookie. <laughs> I know you are. Thank you so much for coming on to our guest. And um, you can find out everything your ladies are doing on www.andwethought.com. While you're there, take a moment, go to the ladies tab, go down to the middle and see the charities that we proudly support. Um, yeah, we know that times are hard. So, I mean, money might not be a thing and that's okay. So maybe you were like me. I've done some office cleaning and now I have more things to donate and you might be donating things you might want to think about them and if that's not the case that's fine too you may just want to look them up on the internet and um send them a, a nice little email that says thank you so much for doing good in the world because we all need a little bit of encouragement to continue on our path so we thank you in advance for that and remember wisdom is all around you if you're open to finding it and accepting it so peace and love you guys from Wilnona and Jade bye bye oh yeah and thanks for listening I 